Welcome to day four of Video Ninja. In this video, we'll be recovering record locally and remote timers and my favorite breakout groups. Let's get started. The first thing I did was I created a room called Video Ninja Day 4. Now I'm not using a password, but I recommend that you add a password in the future for security purposes. I copied the link and I'm adding one guest to it. Now I'd like to turn off the speaker for this so there's no back feed, but don't worry, the mic is still active. Once your guest has been added back on the director panel, let's take a look at what recording locally or remote looks like. Back in the director panel, underneath the guest, go to additional controls. Under additional controls, you'll see one that says record local or record remote. Let's take a look at both. Click on record local. Now for a quick Interruption. A huge shout out to our friends at Veeam for sponsoring this episode. Veeam Backup for AWS can easily protect all of your Amazon EC2, RDS, and VPC data. Wait a second. They can protect my VPC data too? Yep, that's right. Simplify AWS backup and recovery while ensuring security and compliance. All right, now back to our episode. Now, Steve does provide some advanced configuration or video bitrate if you'd like to change it. Remember that this must stay open and active in order for the recording to work. But you are the director, so it's gonna be up and running. Make sure that you receive the full download before you close out the director panel. If we click OK, then we'll notice that we are gonna start recording and it's gonna be dropped locally. I'll just drop this in my downloads folder and we'll walk through some other steps. If you take a look in the lower left-hand corner of the browser, it's continuing on and doing the recording locally. Remember, keep it open. Now let's take a look at what it looks like when we stop the recording. If you click on the active recording button on the left side, this will stop it. Once the file completely downloads and it's ready to go, you can actually open it up if you'd like or convert it. I'll provide some advanced steps on how to do that in a later tutorial. What does record remote look like? Once you click on record remote, let's see what happens. Once again, we have the option to change the bitrate if we'd like. Note that this is experimental, so have a different set of backups or recording methods available to you. I like this feature, and as Steve improves it, I'll be using this for my podcast. Click on OK, select Save, Save to Downloads or another location. What does that look like from a guest side? Well, doesn't look like anything's happened from my guest side. Take note that I am also the guest on the same machine. This is recording remotely for the guest, that you're gonna save or they can save within their downloads folder. Now I don't have a second machine set up, so I can't really show you from a remote functionality, but don't worry, the file is being saved locally for that guest. We go back to the director panel and let's stop this recording. And note down on the left-hand side in the corner of the browser that the recording is finalizing. So for this next one, I'm gonna show you what timers are and how they work. Let's add this guest to OBS Studio and to see if the timers show up within OBS Studio. For this, I'm just gonna click on the guest scene link and add that to OBS as a source for the browser. Let's walk through that now. If you scroll up, you'll notice that the capture a group scene, we'll click on the link, head on over to OBS Studio, under sources, add a source, browser. I will call this timers, drop in my link, changes to 1920 by 1080, and click on control audio via OBS. Now, once I have the group scene added to OBS, let's head back to the director panel and create a timer. Back on the director panel, I'll scroll down just a little bit, click on create a timer. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'll add a probably a 20 second timer so we can move back and forth between everything and you can see the interaction not only from the local guest side, but how it looks from OBS Studio. Okay, now the timer is counted down on the director side, but what does that look like for the guest? Go ahead and click on the browser tab for the guest. I do have a countdown working, but what does that look like from OBS Studio? Let's head on over there. Notice that the timer is not running on OBS Studio. This is only for a director guest communication behind the scenes trying to give a guess that you have anywhere between five minutes to talk or you have one minute. But what happens when the countdown reaches zero? Does it disconnect the guest? Let's take a look. Head back to the guest and let's see what it looks like from their side. It says you are done. It is flashing right up front in their face. But what does it look like from the director side? When we move over to the director panel, 
we're in the negatives. This is so the director can keep track of the time that's running or allotted for a specific guest. The guest doesn't need to know that it's in negatives, but they need to know that they ran out of time. Let's stop our timer. Okay, for the last thing I'm gonna show you is breakout groups, but in order to show you really how that functions, I need to add two more guests and I'm gonna minimize the browser so that it fits all on the screen and you're gonna have three guests, guests one, two, and three, and I'll show you how breakout groups work. And also, let's add some things to OBS Studio. All right, I have the director panel on the left, I have guests one, guests two, and guests three all lined up in the browser, and I've had to shrink things a little bit to fit it all into one screen, but it's so you can understand how breakout groups work and how they function. Think of this almost as if you're doing a webinar or maybe you're doing an event and you only want certain participants to work together. This is really awesome. It's a really neat feature that was added and I did a separate full on tutorial on it, but I wanna break out and show you, and don't mind the pun, on how it's done. Let's take a look at the director panel and how we can add guest one and guest two into the same breakout group. Back on the director panel, for guest one, and guest two, I'm gonna click on group one and group two. If you don't see these, open up the additional controls. Now let's add guest one and guest two to group one for communication. Notice how guest one and guest two are the only ones within the group. That means they can only communicate and see each other. Audio is only streamed for just those two guests. But what if I want guest one and guest three to work together as well? Let's see how that works. Back in the director panel, for the purpose of this, I'm just gonna click on G3, group three, just a little separated a little bit. So for guest one, I've clicked on G3, and for guest three, I've clicked on G3 as well. Note that now guest one can see not only guest two, but also guest three because they're in the same groups. I think G1, G2, G3, this is really cool when you break these out into a, a number of groups. Think of this as an aspect where you break out like four participants into group one and another four into group three. Think of this from the aspect that you want a director or moderator to move from group to group. Now they're able to do this within the director panel. If you like this video, head on over to my YouTube channel for more content around Video Ninja.